I just want to help people like take a deep breath and realize that this is not like a, a performance based thing. You don't have to like worry about like doing it, figuring it out perfectly. It's not all relying on you. And we do want a sense of freedom to, to be yourself and to go on this journey of healing and to receive and to enter a new relationship of trust and, and confidence and peace with the Lord. Um, so I, I, maybe, maybe the thing is to, to let go. It's not all, it's not all about you <clears throat> and to, to enter into a relationship with, with a father who really is going to care for you. really is going to show you the way that you don't have to like do it all by yourself. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Hey, I'm Father Mark May. What's up, everybody? Father Innocent here. I'm Father PT. <laughs> Stare down. <laughs> Father Angelus. And we are, the, I don't know what we say. We are the Franciscan Friars of the Rule in this yes, is Poco Poco podcast. Welcome back. Back in the St. Joseph's Friary sweat box. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And we're all, that again, time. we're all four together still. Yeah, this is a good little Thanks run. for making time for us, Father Angelus and Father PT. <laughs> Don't even start, my man. Don't even start. Just recently, I was talking about how I'm the, I'm the fourth chair. You know, the, the fourth chair is kind of a flexible one. <laughs> you yeah. kind of come in and out when you want. I'm not that far behind you. When do we start rediscerning, like, who else gets to come on? Is Why are you so far away from the microphone? Is this your first time doing this? <laughs> Maybe I'll just push a little further. Oh, reunited for the first time in a couple of weeks. Father Angelus and I were at new staff training for Focus. Father Innocent was where were you were at. I was in Omaha, Nebraska at Creighton University doing the IPF uh, sem uh, summer seminary program. And Father Pierre <laughs> Toussaint was at home. I was just at home taking care of uh, the friars and just being get, faithful. Being it's like, more prepara uh, preparation time for summer life, which is ooh, happening our summer camp. So come on it's up. kind of Good a. Faith. You got some kids signed up? One. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come, no. bro. It'll come. Yeah. Yeah. The, Father Angelus told a funny story about one of the things that uh, the new staff training for Focus is they have a like a variety night, yeah, which sure. is I guess kind of like a talent show. And, and Poco Poco got a shout out in it. The first joke, well, this young lady who was really great and really funny, we had met before, but the first joke was like, yeah, so uh, we have a lot of priests and religious here. And did you guys see Father Innocent's brother here? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Shots. Well it's okay. Well uh, I think that's very, well very funny. Played. That's very funny. That's my sense of humor. I have a story about Father PT on, oh, no. on my it? trip. So I was, we were, I was walking on Crane campus just uh -huh. doing a rosary walk. And what's very funny is that the 130 seminarians kind of descend on Creighton and we take over like the whole campus. It's just very beautiful. Like the guys are awesome. You have about 40 or 50 priests there. So if you know seminarians and priests, like they're like, it, it, it's, it's like a, it's a thing. There's a lot going on and, and you walk into the chapel, it's full. There's all these priests. It's, but what happens at the same time is freshman preview weekend. Mm. So you have all these freshmen, uh, young uh, men and women come with their parents. So a lot of funny things happen because if they, I mean, seminarians sometimes can come across kind of weird. So they're walking around with their New Balance shoes and their, you know, their polos and things like this. And they, so I'm walking and I'm just going on a rosy walk. I see this lady from a distance and she, you could tell she recognizes me. I'm like, oh, you know, like it, just one of those things is going to be awkward. And she, she's like, she, she stops like 10 feet away. She's like, poco a poco. I'm like, Yes, she's like Father PT. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. no. <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate that because that's not the first that's time. Not the first time no. we have got confused. Yeah, interesting. So yeah. very Father funny. PT. Maybe now that you have glasses, people will be able to tell us apart. Maybe, maybe, wow. maybe. <laughs> just not the two but of you apart. I couldn't wait yeah. to tell you that story, Father that's PT. Awesome. Father PT. <laughs> No, no, definitely not Bobby. That's awesome. Hey, your pen just fell on the floor. I tried to I find would, it. Oh, okay, is that what was happening? <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like <laughs> reaching down. To, How like, do you know my pen fell on the floor? Because it was slowly, I, it was slowly <laughs> <dropped the, laughs> falling off. I got another pencil. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Taking for care of Father Mark Mary. Anything else from uh, Spiritual Direction School? It's just awesome. I know guys listen to the podcast, so I just want to give a shout out to those guys. Um, just super humbled and blessed to be there. The it's a nine week program, so oh. guys say yes to this, and it's it's a it's a pretty amazing thing because the first week uh, we I, I was one of the uh, one of five teachers that teach the guys just on personal prayer. I think the class is called like prayer and discernment, and so we go we go pretty deep in in relational prayer. And this is a preparatory class for the eight day silent retreat. And so, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's just awesome to be there in kind of both capacities. 
and a Father Xavier came mm -hmm. um, to help out um, direct. And it's just great to be with a lot of different priests from all over. So I just want to, yeah, the guys are amazing. Uh, it's just the quality of guy and the caliber of like the young man that God is calling is pretty amazing. So I told him that actually in one of my talks, I was just like, guys, this is something real going on here. That guy, God is calling men like you do the priesthood. They're really going deep. There's a lot of joy. Um, so it's just beautiful <laughs> to see. Mm -hmm. I often like walk away and maybe Father Angelus is your experience too from those weeks at IPF, just like very encouraged mm -hmm. about the church, you know, because very often we can hear the negative things or news reports or whatever it is of whatever, pew sitter documents, all these different things. But like when you're with like 70 or 80 men, priests or seminarians who are just going for it, yeah, love the Lord. Yeah, like I'm like, okay, like if this one priest can have an effective change in yeah. his parish and his diocese, like, okay, this is all worth it. Yeah. So, yeah. I had this really powerful moment with Father Tim Gallagher. He's the, he's a pretty famous guy who writes on the Ignatian, Ignatian mm -hmm. prayer and the rule of this, of rules of the mm -hmm. And uh, he actually goes the whole summer and be, and he's with the guys nine weeks. He teaches, he lives in the dorm with the guys and uh, he's a director and he's just a holy, humble man. And so we were, it was like actually on the elevator as I remember. And he was just sharing about his experience. This is his like 16th summer with these seminarians, mm. um, with, with IPF. And he's like, Father, I could think of very few things that are so important than to invest in, in the prayer lives of seminarians at the beginning of the journey. Mm -hmm. Father, if we teach them how to pray and mm -hmm. teach them how to live in intimacy with God, then I think a lot of things will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is just so well said. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's, that's what he's been doing. And so that's why my heart is really moved to be with guys in formation, because I think it's just so important and God is just doing a lot. Yeah. My experience with IPF, those going through it, those who have gone through it, particularly the, the priests, it's more, it's like one of the best things going on in the church in the U S for sure. I agree. I yeah. just think I'm just like really, really grateful for it and impressed yeah. by it on a, on a very consistent basis. Um, we got mugs. Yeah, yeah we do. Yes, we do. <clears throat> you, 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 nice. you, <laughs> turn Do you know where yours came from? Yeah, mine came from the focus team and focus uh, students at University of Cincinnati. Cincinnati dad? It says Cincinnati, yeah. Is there a reason why it says dad or is it just kind of one of those? Because well, like we're like dads. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we're like, yeah cool. You see Get it? Yeah. <laughs> and then you got you got New I, Mexico? Well, yeah, brother John David's mom, Susan, sent this. It's awesome. I got, I'm rocking also a mom mug from, from the Rewaldis. Buffalo, New York, and we got Australia. One from the London on that's, that's a that's a big one right <laughs> that's there. That's a Australia. power. That's like a colorful one. I like it from the Whitaker family. This uh, I'm all about that. We were choosing mugs before, at least we had an option to, and I chose this because of Father Francesco. You want to honor our big brother, female. big Frank. Yeah, big our friend, friends from Father Cincinnati Jacob. actually sent this to Focus Training where I was at, and it was wow. the only one I came back with. So they, they nice one. Did you use it while you're there? No, I traveled with it, a UL mug because I knew, they only have like a little baby. Seraphim ones. Bro, bold. Oh, so man. you traveled with a. It was a move. Yeah. It was, and a and lot of people a, saw it. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do that next year. And it's a nice mug. I mean, it's a it's oh, a yeah. full mug. mug. So Representing you well. Did you see some UL people there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They only have baby mugs, huh? They have baby styrofoam cups. Okay. Mm, not, not good. And like and like not strong coffee, mm. which when you're meeting with people for five nine hours. hours a day or whatever <laughs> it was, you need a little bit more of that. But when I came back and all like some mugs had arrived because I was gone for about two weeks and they were all like in the regular mug cabinet and I was like, we got to get those Ooh, things out of there. Way to go and pull them out. Not, not just because we wanted to use them here, but I don't want, they can, mugs can be like an, like a weed. They can be like an invasive species in a friary. I'm not trying to like. Or well, they could take it and you never see it again. Yeah. So. And true. sometimes, sometimes we, at some point we got to poverty check the mugs we do have so we can. I did that before I left some of the bigger ones. Good. I'm on it. Bro, you're on Bro, it. I'm you're gonna, you. you're gonna be. Can, can I announce that you're gonna, sure. be, the you're gonna be the new vicar of this house? Oh, that is official. a big yeah. deal. Arm. <clears throat> yeah, it'll be something. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be good. I'm grateful for it, and it's like my part of my heart is I don't kind of, you know, we can be. I can, I've been somewhat like a special project guy for a while, and you're kind. But one of the the downsides, like, I do have like a gifting for some of that stuff. But one of the downsides is you're not like deeply in the fabric mm. of a house, and I kind of just feel the the invitation to that. And, yeah, um, and it's happening. I saw it last night when you got home. You were you were sitting in the library with the posh ones, and there was just a lot of joy. And I'm like, this is it. Yeah, the coming future attractions. Like, That's it. And you've always been in it. Like when you're home, you're home. But mm. it's just good to. It, I just saw it last night. It's gonna be great. You do great, bro. You're gonna do it. Any other announcements that are public? Oh. oh. That's it. That's, That's the only it. public no, one. Okay. <laughs> I, have, so you have one. I have one. Okay. We accept, accepted twelve candidates for next year. 
that's that's pretty so big. We have, yeah, yeah, twelve new postulants coming in. So um, yeah, thank God. I'm, it was a busy season for that. So uh, before I left for Focus, we accepted the last guy, and I was like, "Peace, I'm out of here." <laughs> so <laughs> kind of disconnected for a while. But it's good to be back, and those guys are preparing and doing well. The official handoff happens sometime. Yeah, August. So, yeah, something. something like that. I think that's the largest class since 2008. Well, there we go. Since 2008, and really? That was your class. That was your class. It's been. I mean, not that we've never. I don't I mean, think we've had anything ab- above ten. Okay. Because mine was nine, and then uh, excuse me. Two, ours was nine. Ours was nine. <laughs> <laughs> two years ago was a, a ten. <clears throat> yeah. Now we're up to the twelve. Yeah, so you feel pretty I'm, good about yourself? You feel like you're the best spiritual director in the last 14 years? <laughs> or best uh, vocation 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 director? director? Absolutely not. I do feel, though, that God is actually calling these men, though, which is great. <laughs> that's, that's a very important I, thing. I, I made that distinction on purpose. Like, you... Yeah, the, the reality that, like, it's it's we're really discerning, right? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. really wanting to, to see what God is doing. And so the men, yeah, the men are just in a, in a great place and everybody's fighting to pray and yeah. discern well. And so, yeah, I just think God's calling them, so... And they do too. And and I would just ask the guy, our friends, to pray for the postulants. We have about one month of postulancy left. So um, I'm starting to feel that. My fatherly heart kind of starts to ache a little bit as these guys are getting ready to go on. But they're totally ready and they're excited and everybody's fitted for habits and made their rosaries. and all Names this. approved? Names are a different thing. Names are <laughs> names are getting approved. They're a bit in flux. There's mm-hmm. a little fluid there. Yeah. So, um, but they're just great guys. So we're getting ready to hand them on as well. Beautiful. And it's, to touch on what Father Angel said, like the, the goal, right, isn't to have like the most in the CFR postulant C, but the CMR, CFR cemetery, like meaning like, yeah, you know, exactly. we're, we're trying to get guys set up to live this for, for their whole time. life. So. Yeah. Look at you. That was a I nice said little, it before, that's but a it's nice true. Little thought, we're all just right? trying to die in the habit. Right. I mean, I just want to die in gray. It's, it's <laughs> not easy to die in gray. I want to, I just want to die in gray. Preferably sooner rather than later. <laughs> me not well, you, no, we, not could, you. <laughs> we could make that happen if you want <laughs> i was talking about me <laughs> all right um so a couple of things thanks everybody we're um continuing to yeah just ask kind of a little bit more boldly and directly for your support of the podcast again we're we're losing about two under budget but over budget we're losing about two thousand dollars a month and to help avoid doing um advertisements Sponsors. to cover the costs we're hoping confidently that you'll continue to give and support so if you can give like a monthly gift at um spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco uh that would be extremely helpful i don't know i feel like i feel like you can give like a dollar an episode yeah i mean i feel like you're like if i was like a money dude i'm supposed to ask for like 20 dollars a month but hey if everyone just gave a dollar an episode we'd be just fine we'd be rolling in it (laughs) yeah we'd be be able to fund the orphanage um so we're good (laughs) wow it's true what do you want to change? Just, oh, yeah. just, <laughs> it's not going to happen, but if it did happen, we'd be set. So thank you for that. And if monthly gifts is great, because then we know we have it coming in and don't have to keep asking for money. Right? Right. 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 All right. And today we are continuing with the, um, the little series here on the practice of the presence of God by Brother Lawrence. And again, that's uh, if you want to listen to it, it's on Hallow, which you can find that yes, information with below. your voice, with my voice. I'm not making How many times you listen to it? Actually, 10. It's what I listen to to go to sleep. <laughs> I believe it. Mm-hmm. Hey, is so. it a big book? No, it's a tiny book. Tiny book. Okay. I read it like five times in one day Got while it. recording it. So Got it. you can do it. It's pretty good. And what's pretty good? What does that mean? Reading it five times in one day. It's pretty good. Well, it's in part just because I had to read like f- the same paragraph eight times in a row. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so it's, like, it might be because like I wasn't that good of a reader. Mm. I was trying to affirm you, but I see what's Thanks. happening. Yeah, <laughs> I see what's happening it. here. All right. Um, so here's, there's a thing about Brother Lawrence, which I love, and I think can be a source of a lot of encouragement and help for a lot of people. And I kind of want to look at that. Glasses. 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 <laughs> Guys, this is This is like me. you trying to wear a mask on a plane. <laughs> wow. You I was very good at that. You were not very good at that. You were like, <laughs> like a little squirrel in a cage. A fidget spinner. Hey, you this need, is the first time I wear glasses. You need to keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no one even comment. Back to Brother Larry. <laughs> <laughs> what? A, what? A, like I think there's just something really beautiful about his um, a number of and this is this a number of quotes within the book, kind of talking about how he both wrestles again with his own weakness and then that uh, and then the, the the struggles he sees in the world. And I think it's like a similar a similar thing, like learning what is like yours and God's to work through, learning what is just God's to work through, what is like what we have to surrender. Uh, what's appropriate, like attention to ourselves and then what's an appropriate time 
just to be kind of looking, you know, at the Lord. And so I, let's, I'm going to read a, maybe one or two of them. <laughs> that He had no scruples, for he said, when I fail in my duty, I readily acknowledge it, saying, I'm used to do so. I shall never do otherwise if I'm left to myself. If I fail not, then I give God thanks, acknowledging that it comes from him. Uh, another one, right? I think that one was, I might have read it in a way that was confusing. Look, Father Mark Murray, can you read that again? That was what happened in the recording. Okay. <laughs> did, you, um, did you do that voice also? Uh, did I do that voice? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to read it? Okay. <laughs> 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 that he was very sensible of his faults, but not discouraged by them. That he confessed them to God and did not plead against him to excuse them. When he had done so, he peacefully resumed his usual, usual practice of love and adoration. And then um, by rising after my falls and by frequently renewed acts of faith and love, I'm coming to a state wherein it would be difficult for me not to think of God as, as it was at first accust to accustom myself to it. So there's this idea, right? Of like, okay, I, I can, my stomach growl. like an appropriate sort of like, okay, he's paying attention to it. He's living a real interior life. He's paying attention. He's doing an examination of conscience. Like when he's doing activities, going about his day. And then it's kind of like what he does with that. Okay. He wasn't just indifferent towards his sin but he understood his own weakness and he just would say, okay, Lord, like I, I need your help. I surrender to you, make an act of resolution to, to do better. There's, there's a number of these things of kind of this, from this place, like apart from you, I can do nothing. This understanding that like, hey, Lord, like if I'm going to be faithful, I, I need your grace. If you leave me alone, I'm just going to keep sinning. Uh, and then just kind of going back to, to again, just being this ongoing habitual conversation with God, which we've talked about as the practice of the presence of God. Uh, before going on, would you guys want to, add a little something to that yeah i think it's um i got in there first <laughs> uh this is huge as far as just recognizing who you are and who god is right that's essentially francis and um and it's huge because it just opens up this new door of freedom just to understand okay i don't have everything figured out i can't be perfect and it's just like a bunch of different like so father and father um benedict would often quote to us i think it's from blaze pascal if you try to be like angels, you become like demons, demons or something yeah. like that. Where <clears throat> if we try to be perfect, if we think that the answer lies with us, then it's just setting us up for a very big fall. Um, but just having this this method or at least this way of, of thinking or just positioning your heart maybe before the Lord is helpful to say, okay, Lord, you know my heart, you know everything, and here it is. You know, the, the not just the good things, but the bad things. And Father Vinny, um, <laughs> gave us a retreat, Father Vinny Fortunato from the Capuchins, or IPF. And um, <clears throat> anyway, so he gave us a very professor retreat and he just said simply, you know, like the Lord doesn't want the good things. In a sense, like, yes, he does. But what he wants are the things that he doesn't have, which are your sins, because he's given you the gifts, if you will, right? He's given you the things that you can rely on and go towards, um, but he doesn't have those sins and he wants to be invited in that place. And once that happens, once the transformation happens, as far as, okay, Lord, here I am and here's my heart, and it's just freeing just to kind of move throughout your day and just know that I'm not going to be bogged down by these things because it's an encounter of love and encounter being supported and trusted and even more. So just a place where I can experience his peace and his mercy. And so. I'll have more to say in a bit, but um, I love this. The, the second quote that you read, he peacefully resumed his usual practice. I think it's just important, like the this episodes leading up to this and setting the foundation of how to live in the presence of God and how to live in this place of trust, because I mean, from my own experience, but just also walking with a lot of people, sometimes our usual practice is anxiety. Our usual practice is self-focused. Our usual pra practice is, is not the Lord and not his loving gaze and mercy upon my life and the way he loves me and cares for me. And so it's beautiful that it's so important that this, the foundation is set um, in a place of prayer, in a place of identity, in a place of, of knowing who God is. So you have something to return to. I think a lot of people experience the insecurity of their lives and the anxiety of the world and all these kinds of things. A lot of good people, a lot of practicing Catholics, a lot of people who follow the Lord. But do we really have a place uh, of a usual practice? Do we usually do we really have a foundation that we set all this stuff on? Um, and I think that's what Brother Lawrence is proposing. Like that, that foundation is so important. If we're going to experience our sin, which we always will, and if we're inclined to be consumed by it and, and be worried about it, oh, I'm a sinner, or, or if we're sensitive to the things in the world and we get overcome by the challenges of our time and things that and the other thing, well, we have to have a, a usual practice. We have a place to fall back on. And so I, that's why I just think this conversation is important. Yeah, I've 
PT, I, I, I too thought of St. Francis, right? Um, at the beginning of his conversion and he started the friars, one of the friars overhears him in his own prayer saying like, who is God and who am I? Mm-hmm. What's beautiful about Brother Lawrence when I read these things, man, this guy knows who God is right. and this guy knows who he is, right? right? <clears throat> so this is the journey of just asking asking the deep questions, but also, also being transformed, right? Living in a place of truth and being able to receive, yeah, like God, you are so good and you're all powerful and you're merciful. Mm-hmm. Right, and who I am is, is just I'm, I'm weak, <clears throat> and I need you, right? And and you just start living in the truth about who we are, sons and daughters of God. We, uh, the word that comes up is just there. We can just live life with humility. Mm-hmm. I don't have to try to do it myself. I don't have to make it by my, make it myself. I'm not in control. Mm-hmm. And there's just this humble way where we're like, yeah, you know, I know who God is. I know who I am. I'm weak. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> and I just kind of return and and we say this a lot, but to stay in relationship. But the invitation just to, to humility and humility is just living in the truth about who we are, mm-hmm. who God is and who we are. So he owns it. Like he's living it. He's no longer questioning like, huh, you know, and there's a journey where we all have to do that. But to, to, to receive the truth that we can just, yeah, we can be weak. We can be poor. We can be sinners. Um, and we can just bring that. That's the starting place with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And even to just <clears throat> somebody mentioned to me, um, like whenever we confront these things as far as like, okay, I consistently fall in this pattern of sin or I consistently fall in these things or I'm always reacting this way, anxiety, whatever it is, just simply say, Jesus, here I am again, help me. You know, so that you can now go back to whatever it is and he hears it and there is some sort of like, oh, like Jesus is a part of this too. And so you could kind of just let go of the anxiety, the fears, whatever is happening and you can kind of just, okay, I'm going through this with Jesus. I'm going to be walking with him in this real way. And so. That's awesome. Great. I'm going to read this a different one again, uh, or part that I kind of cut. Cause I do think this is, again, it's very concise when he had finished, like he finished what he's doing. He examined himself, how he discharged his duty. If he found well, he returned thanks to God. If otherwise he asked pardon and without being discouraged, he set his mind right again and continued his exercise as of, of the presence of God. And I think there's a couple of kind of, again, to kind of keep talking about it and to build off of what some of what you guys said, one, one of the places this comes up with, I guess one of the reasons it's a struggle, and it was something I, I, it was kind of brought to my mind even while working with some of the missionaries, right, is because of many of us like who are sincere, we want to follow the Lord. And one expression of that sincerity and like in it, that how we want to express our sincerity to the Lord and, and his goodness and, and what is right and just is to stop sinning. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we so we and so like especially <clears throat> young people in their conversions, like hopefully we all but they're like. I want to root this stuff out. I want to grow in virtue. I want to root out. I want to root out vice. And so I like, I want, I want to, like, this is serious stuff, but it has to be, I think, properly ordered. And so there, there is just, there is an, it's interesting. It's just an interesting kind of mix that I, I kind of love for you guys to help wrestle with is like, what is an appropriate sort of intensity and concern and focus on growing and sin and what is like a healthy kind of like freedom and childlikeness and confidence in God and his mercy and his timeline. Because it was, it was kind of brought up to me with just some, some of the talks and things like that I gave. There's this question like you, it's just like, how do you do this? Because uh, you seem to have a certain like levity about these things. You like make jokes and you have a good time. Uh, like, how do you balance that? And, or, and they're like, but I'm like super serious. I'm like super intense. Like, how, yeah. like what, what am I missing or how do I properly integrate this? Do you guys have any, anything else just on how to, cause we're not being indifferent towards sin, no. <clears throat> but also it's, it's, we don't want to be indifferent towards God and his mercy and his, the fact that we're like totally, <laughs> I think that, that might be it. Like we're just totally, I, I can't do it without you. Like I know it, you know? It reminds me of a recent conversation Father Angelus and I had about just walking with young men. And, and I think there is such deep desire early on in conversion. And um, I, I also think that if you're serious about living holiness and in and, and deeper conversions, that there's a lot of stuff out there to help you do that, right? So there, you know, there's a lot of programs or good spiritual direction, like focus, like all these different things that can cultivate it. And so especially if I could just say postulants come to religious life, it's super easy for them to like, okay, like what do I do? And Mm. there's an intensity and, and they're very much, there's such a, there's their hearts in the right place, but we have to just be very careful that we like that we keep control or remain in control, right? It's like all about us and what we're going to do. And there, the intensity is kind of, 
again, we're, we're in control and, um, or it all depends on us or like, yeah, we have to figure this out. And, and so we have, we have a sense sometimes that, that we're just not being cared for or God's not leading or, or that I have to kind of prove myself to God. Um, and so that's, I guess the first thing that I want to want to say is this is very real in, in young people's lives. And, and I think what I, like, I just want to help people like take a deep breath and realize that this is not like a, a performance based thing. You don't have to like worry about like doing it, figuring it out perfectly. It's not all relying on you. And we do want a sense of freedom to, to be yourself and to go on this journey of healing and to receive and to enter a new relationship of trust and, and confidence and peace with the Lord. Um, so I, I, maybe, maybe the thing is to, to let go. It's not all, it's not all about you <clears throat> and to, to enter into a relationship with, with a father who really is going to care for you. really is going to show you the way that you don't have to like do it all by yourself. I think it's key. Like I think we, in our sin, we control and even in our healing, we can need to control. Right. So like we have this sense of like, well, I'm going to heal. I'm going to convert. I'm going to do all these things, but we still have control. And I, and I think the root or the, the gift of a conversion is I surrender control. I'm not in, I'm not in charge of my own healing. Um, we have all these programs for healing. We have these things for healing. I can go to counseling for healing. I can go to 12 step groups for healing, which are all such a gift from the Lord, but they're exactly that. They're not the, if, if I don't do those things with the Lord, it's me taking control. I'm going to go to counseling and get something out of it. I'm going to go to a 12 step meeting and get something out of it. I'm going to go to spiritual director. If I remain in control, it defeats the whole purpose of what actually God wants to do, which is like, ask us for control back. Like I want to take control of your life. I want to provide for you. I want to give you grace. I want to give you intimacy. I want to give you all that you desire, but I want to give it to you. Right. And especially being with the missionaries, it was such a gift, but I feel like that was the most consistent conversation I was having, especially with people on their journey of chastity. As, as I've said this before, like chastity is about lust, but it's also about control. We stopped trusting God at some point that he would provide for our intimacy and that he would bless our sexuality and bless our relationships. So when we made that choice, now in our conversion, God wants to be with us in prayer and ask for the control back. I wanna provide for you. And I think we, I think we like, yeah, I have a lust problem. So we like bound that up. And I'm like, I don't think it's a lust problem. I think it's a control problem. You're not willing to let go of control. You control your intimacy. And, but the challenge is and like, yeah, Father, I definitely want to heal. And then you control your healing. <laughs> and you control your holiness and you control your discipleship. And I think what Brother Lawrence, the secret of Brother Lawrence, he loses all control and then everything becomes a gift. Intimacy and prayer becomes a gift. Chastity and purity become a gift. Oh, his weakness. His weakness is like, oh gosh, because in my weakness, God gets to come get, come, come be close to me. And that's a gift, right? And so when we when we like let, like again, I think I have it written down here. The, the key to conversion is God wrestling control back from us. And then that allows us to, to experience what we actually want to experience instead of just like masking our, our conversion when we're still in control of it. Sorry, I get fired up about that. It's okay. <laughs> And yeah, and even to just uh, just maybe furthering these points is just that like God's timeline is not our timeline sometimes. Absolutely. You know, like we think very linearly, okay, so once I get rid of behavior X or Y, then I'll experience more peace, more joy. And yes, once again, like conversion is real and we have to stop doing certain things in yeah. order. You know, like That's we, a part of it. <clears throat> right? Like we, we can't just live in this fantasy world. Well, I'm going to sit in the chapel and all of a sudden I'm going to stop whatever like sinful pattern. Like, no, you have to say no at times, but the grace comes and is real. If once again, we, we dispose ourselves to the Lord and we ask him, Hey, in a real way, Jesus, I need this help. And I need this. But also once again, to think that, okay, God's timing is a perfect timing. You know, like his ways are perfect. And if we're able to give ourselves over to that timeline and just to, in freedom say, okay, Lord, how is it that you want to help me in this? As opposed to, I'm going to do all these things for you. Cause it's not performance based. We we can't do anything more to earn God's love. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we have it already. Like just because like, okay, I've given up these things. Now he's going to love me more. No, that's human thinking. And you know, the Lord doesn't think that way because we have it all. We're precious in his eyes. And yes, he wants us to behave more or yes, he wants us to like to, to walk in his ways. But at the same time, just his timing is his timing. And so just to trust in that in a real way. And so. Yeah, I love that. I, and I, I love, I think that that's a really good word to put onto it is like, like who's in control of this? Who, and, and again, like there is real cooperation with grace, but who's primary, again, we literally, we just can't do it without the Lord. We, we can't do it without the Lord. So I, I really, I think that's a, that's a great, um, great word to uh, kind of to understand it, like losing, giving up control. There's, 
Um, you know, there's that gospel passage of the kind of the Jesus is using it as a explanation of like kind of a teaching on prayer where there's like the Pharisee who's in there and it talks about how he's like, he's talking to himself, talking mm-hmm. about basically he's saying like all of like the good things he's doing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then, and then the, and then there's the example of the sinner who just like can't even raise his eyes to heaven and says, Lord have mercy on me, a sinner. And, and I think what's, what's interesting and what we can apply here is right. Is you can actually, uh, you can be as off talking about like the good things you're doing just to yourself <laughs> as talking about like the bad things you're doing yeah, exactly. just to yourself. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, where, where the, the sinner is, is in the right is that he, whatever he has, he's directing it to the Lord. Right. And, and it's not just about him. He's just saying like, again, it's like, and that is the ultimate sort of, I guess, expression of surrender of control of Lord have mercy on me. Like I can't save myself. I can't heal myself. I can't be, I can't sanctify myself. Like mm-hmm. have mercy on me, O Lord and sinner. And, um, and so I do think, I think that that is like a beautiful move is just, okay, this is what brother Lawrence does. And this is how we, he's living this practice of the presence of God is okay. For now this time with the Lord, I'm going to do my examination. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to surrender it to him, ask for the help. And I'm going to go back, have conversing with the Lord and not just get stuck uh, talking at myself, looking in the mirror, that kind of stuff. Beating myself off. Because at the end, like, yeah. it's not, it's just not about us. Mm-hmm. You know, this whole thing is not about us. It's about him. Right. And <clears throat> I love the fact that there, this is called the practice of the presence of God. Cause you have to practice these things. Right. Mm-hmm. And I love this line. Um, and without being discouraged, he set his mind right again and continued his exercise of the presence of God. So this is the response instead of taking control and like letting the stress kind of well up or anxiety right. well up because things aren't our way or we don't like our weakness. Setting our minds right again is like putting ourselves back in relationship, mm-hmm. um, evangelizing ourselves. We have to practice that. And I love the fact that's, if you want to know kind of what this journey looks like, it's over and over setting your mind right again, mm-hmm. instead of, instead of kind of falling into ourselves and getting stuck in the, in the self-righteousness is we set our mind right and our hearts right again and staying in relationship and saying, okay, Lord, no, you're in control. How do you see me? How do you love me? How, what do you want to do here? Right. right. And again, just being in relationship. So I, that's the, that's the move. Mm-hmm. He set his mind right again. And I think that's why it's like, this is how the practice looks. We practice this all the time. Go ahead, bro. Okay. <clears throat> it's real quick. Um, somebody used this example one time of like, oftentimes spiritually, we want to be 25, 30 years old, but we're really six years old. <laughs> and so we're, we're complaining. We can't drive as a six year old. You know what I mean? Like you're an awkward six year old. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Glasses, man. Um, and so like, sometimes we want to be somewhere else. And just the reality is just, just be six years old, just be with the Lord, just be with him. And then eventually those things will come. Eventually more things will be revealed and more grace will be given. And, and once again, he's walking with you in this way and you'll learn how to drive and you'll be able to do other things in the future. But in the present moment, just be with him in relationship. I feel like when we get we get frustrated because we just, we're not there yet. I want to be there. I want to graduate from this mm-hmm. from this experience. I just want to get out of this <clears throat> this angst or this anxiety or this constant worry. But the thing is, it's there. And I don't have any sort of theological reality to back this up. But the, like, we could have a complete conversion and then never struggle again, or we could make this decision day to day and have an experience of God coming to be with us, and that's holiness. Right. I think we all want to be like, I can't wait till I don't have to struggle with this anymore. I can't wait until I don't need God. I know. Right. And so then all of a sudden it's like, if we're not struggling, then we're not exactly, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to move on from God. I'm going to move on from my poverty. I told everybody at focus training, I was like, I think everyone wants to graduate from their poverty. Like when's the class at focus training where we don't have to be poor anymore, (laughs) you know, and it's just not the case. And so the day-to-day struggle, the day-to-day frustration where we get a chance to set it right again, to set our mind right right again and turn to God. That's a real moment of healing, a real moment of grace. And we have to do that every day. That's intimacy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tate, let's go bring it on. Right. But I think we just want to, we just get frustrated and like, gosh, I hate this. And I don't want to do this. And we can't wait till I don't have to do this anymore. When God's like, Hey, then I just, all I want to do is come to you every day and save you. If that, can that be okay? Can that be the case? This, this is make me very happy. Just so you know, just this is make. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a executive production change. Sure. We're gonna I'm gonna bring in one thing that we're gonna do a whole different episode on, but we're gonna we're gonna just, I'm gonna bring it up right now. Bring it up, bro. <laughs> we and trust then you. we'll do another thing. We right? trust you, bro. You, try, you with it? I'm with it. Because it, this is also it's one of my favorite quotes. What I, I went to a lot. It's from one of the letters of Brother Lawrence where he's writing. I think he's writing about a religious sister who he talked to, and he says that she would go faster than grace. Mm. 
And that's yeah. that's a similar concept. Like she wanted to be perfect. She wanted to be here. She wanted to, to graduate from needing God. She needed to graduate mm-hmm. from returning to his mercy or whatever it was. But you can only go as fast as grace, right? Mm-hmm. And so yeah. that's like what you were saying. Like you want to be, you know, at this at this age or this maturity in the spiritual life, but you're at this one. Yeah. And, you know, if the Lord wanted you to be perfect tomorrow, like he could actually, he could give us that grace. Mm-hmm. But it seems like ordinarily, <clears throat> except for, you know, a few like St. Therese or whatever, like he's going to, it's going to be, it's going to take time. Yes. It's going to take time. And it, and again, it's like, you can't speed it up and you can't force it. And one of the things that leads to is just this, this frustration, but is it frustration about like not really loving the, the Lord or is it, is it, or is it really like a frustration about still being needy or still being in poverty or still being a sinner? Like, 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 and I think, I think often we can kind of get confused where we think we want to be perfect because like the Lord deserves it, but really it's because we want, we want, it feels good to be, you know, we don't, we want to graduate. We don't want to keep needing God. We don't need to keep being yeah. sinners. It's really like a frustration at our weakness as opposed to and like his not getting what he deserves. I think Yeah, we fall in love with the accomplishment of getting over our, <clears throat> our sins as opposed to the reason why we're doing it is for relationship. Deeper relationship. Yeah. And it's, it's all about sonship and being mm-hmm. sons and daughters, right? right. Because right. The, 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 what Jesus shows us, especially like as he prepares for his death, I can do nothing by myself. I only, right. I only do what I see the father doing. So this is, this, it, it, this way of living is that is an attack against being sons and daughters mm-hmm. because the son and daughter are always going to remain in this place of openness with the father. Right. And we're poor and like, we just need to constantly be, be receive and have the father just give everything to us. Right. Um, now on a more funny note, um, I, I have a nickname around here, uh, at least in past year, people call me flash. I, I tend to move pretty quick. Um, uh, just high, kind of high octane and mm-hmm. stuff, but I hope that doesn't translate into spiritual life. I'm getting out of the Lord, but I can, I can relate. You just yeah. want to move quick and we want, yeah. we want to grow quick and you mm-hmm. want, you know, 11 months, I want postulants just to go for it. Mm-hmm. But I constantly, the Lord is like, yeah, huh, whoa. Like I'm the formator here. And and it's just to be with him in those moments. That's it, it, just to let go of control totally. Um, and he, and he's the one that that cultivates, that fertilizes, and it's in his time. I think but you're I, I feeling, move quick. I think you're feeling that more this year though too. I Just in conversations, like just being in it with the guys, kind of loading them where they're at. They they sometimes get frustrated and sometimes get discouraged. At, like, am I in desolation? Am I in dryness? And like, but I just, all I want is the Lord and all I want is to, to less of my my stuff. But but not that that's new but or different, but I feel like this this class in particular is really going for it and then really just feeling it along the way. And it's mm. beautiful just to kind of love them in that and encourage them in that. But it's also powerless for you because you can't do anything. Yeah. I mean, it would be foolish to, I don't know what Father, I think there's a quote, but like it would be foolish to, uh, yeah, try to push guys ahead of where they're at, or try yeah, to or try to provide a medicine that's not true or real. Yeah, and it does violence to someone to to pull them um, when and and lay something upon them that they can't receive, right? And that's that's for anybody, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey. Um, but I, I heard, I think Sister Miriam says this that like, um, you know, healing's always slow. Mm-hmm. It's always slow. Like, um, the gift of you know, again, Jesus's own life. There was there was this this consistent kind of slowness to even him being born and, <clears throat> and the, and the, the hidden life of Nazareth and, and the, the, the ministry, like it's, it's slow. And so there's a, there's just something beautiful about like staying with his pace and breathing with him. Right. Reading this book, I think we we're reading the same book called impact of God. Is that mm-hmm. what it's called about John of the cross? And he, I don't know if it's him or the guy who's writing it, but said, has this beautiful quote of the, our deepest healing is our need for God. Right. And so the challenge, I think, for a lot of us who want to be on a journey of healing and growth and discipleship and, and desiring holiness and things is that um, we can make healing an idol. We can make holiness an idol. We can make all these things the end. And I think what we come back to consistently is healing. Like healing is not the end. Discipleship is not the end. Um, holiness is not the end. I think in a lot of circles, too, virtue, like we just need to be virtuous. Virtue is not the end. All of these things are are vehicles and ways for deeper relationship and deeper experience of God, right? So when we control healing, we make an idol of it, you know, instead of saying, I, I want to experience a deeper healing in my life so I can be in a deeper experience of relationship with God, right? And, and give God permission to do that in whatever way he wants. But oftentimes we become so consumed with things and there's a temptation for them to make the mo- make that the most important thing. That all of my prayer and all of my day, everything's consumed with this one little project that I want to have, or one little virtue I want to have, or whatever. Um, and it should, you just got to be careful. Mm. Like when you when you, when you seize control, 
and you're after a deeper experience in a relationship with the Lord, that all kind of comes in his own time and in his own way. But we just got to be careful because we can easily make those things idols. You're on fire today, Father Angelus. I think that's good. He is. Oh, go ahead. Just Digging real quick. Deep. This is uh, my guy, Father James Atkins, uh, CFR. <laughs> Jimmy A. Um, he would talk about like when we give testimonies as friars sometimes where uh, certain friars, if yeah, they're not properly checked or whatever, like sometimes you could share too much about your past life mm -hmm. and it's like somewhat scandalous, right? <clears throat> but then all of a sudden, whatever, you, you continue sharing. And so he's had the expression, sometimes we can go from um, just being a person in sin to a Pharisee, you know, like just make that transition. By do think he was talking about testimonies, but I do think that's true sometimes in in our own spiritual lives, where once again we could have this deep encounter of healing, of mercy, of God's awesomeness, and just care for us in the moment, and then we go to this place of now everything has to be in a, in a way Pharisaical, like I'm going to say when it happens, how it happens, or whatever it is. And if you look at the the disciples and Brother Lawrence and just everybody who was with Jesus at the time, all they the ones who worked out, or the ones at least where the ones at least we know about they were with Jesus, like St. Peter in particular, right? Like because he knew Jesus, because he was with him, because he walked with him, he saw not only just um, the different miracles he did, but just the day-to-day, -day, just having dinner with him, getting to know his laugh, getting to know him. Like he was able to look him in the eyes at the end with the resurrection on the beach and receive that mercy mm -hmm. because he knew Jesus and because mm -hmm. he was walking with him. And so just once again, the encouragement with Brother Lawrence and all this is just, just to be with him. Just be with the Lord because that's where he desires for you to be walking with him, getting to know his laugh, getting to, to be with him because that's where everything happens, um, both in our poverty, but also he wants to bless us in that way. The One of our um, brothers shared this line that I've been using and, and it's based off something Sister Miriam said as well, is he was put in charge of the the big building that we have in the Bronx and for like a couple of years or whatever. And he's like, after that, I realized why it's called a building, not a built because there's like, there's always something new. There's always something mm -hmm. you have to keep going. Right. And I do think it's like with, with our own lives, it's like, we're never really healed. We're always like in a process of healing and it's never, we're like fully sanctified. We're always in a process of sanctification or fully converted. It's always this ongoing conversion. Like that's kind of like the state in life. We're on an ongoing journey. Right. And it's, it's, there's, there's ongoing. Yeah. It's just, it's going to take, it's going to continue. It's going to be ongoing. And the Lord's okay with that. If he wanted it to be perfect tomorrow, he could do, do that. that. That'd be sweet. But we can't make it. Happen. You can ask for it. You just can't manufacture it, right? You can't go faster than grace. But you mentioned, Father um, uh, Angelus, like that you can make healing an idol. And I think you could make probably like a, a perception of like of perfection an idol oh, no or question. of even of holiness an idol where it becomes like what you're focused on and you're worshiping as opposed to the Lord, right? It's mm -hmm. like about the Lord. And, um, is that, I mean, does that, I think that's probably yeah, like a, mis sure. a misunderstanding of like what holiness is. I think you totally. can make it an idol. Well, I think that the idol is perfectionism. Okay. I think that's a, that's the word I, I was just talking sure. to a formator at one of the local seminaries and, and he's saying like, this is what they're seeing in young men more and more is this, again, this misplaced desire for holiness and, and kind of being with the Lord that they're there. They want to come and they want to be perfect on the outside, on the inside. And so the, again, it's the striving and it's the performing, That's right? It. I think the gospel today was like, don't perform, right? And this is, but what's hard here is that the perfectionism is fueled by insecurity. And so like I'm mm -hmm. insecure, I don't feel loved. I've, I, I've been rejected or haven't received a place of, 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 of true like foundational security. And so then, then, <clears throat> then the only way people are going to love me if, if, if I perform and I'm perfect. The only way God's going to love me is that, so it's been sewed into us um, but it, but it's dangerous, right? Because again, it's just like the Pharisees is we can just say, okay, I got to be, it's like the self-righteous. Mm -hmm. I'm going to perform and I'm going to be perfect because I have a deep desire to be loved and I, and I don't necessarily feel that in the depths of who I am. Rather than seeking the Lord and being in a fruitful relationship with him and then holiness and healing and all these virtue becomes a fruit of my experience of him. So all of these things we're talking about are fruits of, of, our, of our experience of being loved by God because he then creates security in us by, the, by his gift of grace. And so we, we grow in security. And, and it's so awesome because um, <clears throat> this, there's this real stronghold over um, young people today, probably people in joining religious life and seminary, proper, probably people in missionary life. There's this huge stronghold of perfectionism, performing, achieving, earning, all of that. And it's 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 real because again that's it's such a such a great point it, the, what that is a that's put on top of a foundation 
that lacks a real security. Yeah, the root system there is like a lacking of love, <laughs> lacking of security. And so it manifests the, f- the bad fruit is like, okay, I gotta, I'm not, I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to feel alone. Mm-hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to perform and be perfect so people love me. So then, then they hear this. They're like, oh, Father, that's so true. So what's their natural follow-up? So what do I do? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, they, we can't get it out of our system. It's yeah. like, so just tell me what to do. I'm like, actually, it's not about, you know? And so people think they're, they're not comfortable with focusing on relationship. They're not comfortable with, okay, I use the image when, when I pray with God. It's just the idea that the, there's a, God wants to rebuild the temple of your heart. And in the temple is the Holy of Holies. And that's where you find your security. Do you actually, are you actually aware that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit lives in the Holy of Holies within your heart? And if you can experience that, be built up from that and grow, that's where your security comes from. So then I experience something on the outside and it actually wouldn't matter. Because I have, a, I have a secure place where, where I grow in my relationship with God and experience the truth of who I am. And that, but the challenge is like, like Brother Lawrence, that's a practice. You have to you be aware of that and practice living from that place in your prayer, but also at every moment of the day. And I think people who are busy and achieving and perfect and all that stuff, it's just very hard to live there. It's like, everybody's in a rush all the time. Everybody's mm-hmm. running around. I, yeah, and everybody just makes me anxious. I know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I work, I'm probably at work all the time, so. That was meaning to say. And yeah, just to acknowledge that too, that it's life experiences often that we have to break through and allow the Lord to kind of meet us where we are. Because society, wherever we are in society, like, okay, the next, uh, the best way forward is for me to put my, you know, like my working boots on or whatever it is. And just to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, you know, I'm going to be the self-made man or whatever it is. And so once again, it's going against that spirit of yeah perfectionism and just making things happen on my own because the devil's insidious. He's not going to tempt us as, as good faithful Christians and Catholics to go rob a bank or whatever it is, you know, but it's going to kind of be this like rooted thing of, uh, what are you smiling for? <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at myself. Go ahead. <laughs> um, anyway, I was going to go down the road, but, um, but just the fact of like, okay, Hey, just keep, keep feeding yourself or like, you got to do this. And this is how the Lord wants you to, to accomplish salvation. You got to work it out with fear and trembling can even use scripture, you know, sometimes to kind of back it into our hearts. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but once again, it's coming to this place of freedom, coming to this place of realizing, okay, Lord, you're the one who's going to do this for me. And it takes work. It's, it's a practice. Once again, it takes work. Go ahead. Are you changing the topic? No, I mean, no. Okay. What do you mean? I just didn't topic? know if you were going to jump in and change the topic. I, I wanted to comment mm-hmm. on that, but I, I just didn't want to. Go ahead. Okay. Um, me and Father Anderson were just talking about this too. It's like, so people are in this place where they, where they, okay, so I want to surrender control. Um, but then they come to you and you're like, Father, can you pray with me? Or Father, can you be chat or whatever? And so it's beautiful because then they want us to take control as spiritual directors and spiritual fathers. And it's like, okay, vocation director, posture director. Well, Father, just tell me or you do something for me. And so it's really beautiful. And, and this is my, my experience of praying with that guy a couple months ago, but like his member, his thought, just we asked Jesus for everything. So these guys coming up, Father, can you, can you pray with me? Sure. And so the first thing we do is just, just pray, put ourselves in the presence of the Lord and just say, okay, Jesus, you lead us. And you just reveal um, what you, where you want us to begin in this, in, in this young man's journey and whatever you want to bring up in his heart. And he always does, which is so beautiful. But I think it's shocking to people that we don't take control either. Like we're not like manufacturing healing and, and uh, discipleship or, or holiness for people. But it's beautiful when we we all then can be in this place uh, to surrender. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, as, as a spiritual father, he's like, oh, I, I want to fix this. And there's a real grieving and a real suffering involvement when they're suffering. And I was just like, Lord, I, I, I don't want them to suffer. But when you can take a deep breath too and be like, oh yeah, let's just ask Jesus. All right, Lord, what do you want to do? You know, and so I think it's, I think it re, yeah, reminds them that it's like, we're not even in control. And I think sometimes it's like, oh, Father, just do it. Just tell me what to do. Just, you know, it's just a funny thing. One of the, uh, a question I got asked somewhat regularly, and I think I might change my answer now at uh, Focus. I was there for like two weeks and there wasn't another brother there because of just the circumstances. It's like, do you miss do you miss the guys? Do you miss the brothers? Like, well, not really. <laughs> um, but part of that is just because it's like two weeks is not long of a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what I'm and the missionaries are great and I'm like, hey, you're, not, you're, like, not fed, you're being fed? It's so? like priest Disneyland. I'm like playing basketball. I'm meeting with people. They're all like, they're, you know, they're getting after it, all that sort of stuff. Like, you, got, you got a tan, by the way. Yeah. I did get a tan. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but this is something because I, I was experiencing a little bit of like a maybe not an insecurity or maybe an insecurity, but like an unsureness because I'm just really great th- that that like we're on the same page and I'm like I'm not alone in thinking this because I gave a couple of homilies and I think after, after one of them and just my own heart and some of my conversations, I was feeling like a little, I don't know, just a little like 
one guy with a particular approach or opinion and that wasn't necessarily everywhere. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's good to be like, if we would have been there and I could have like, we could have chatted through it. Like, oh, okay, I'm not an idiot. Um, <laughs> yeah, bro, so we're so with you. I'm yeah. pretty so sure it's you. a gospel thing, not just a Franciscan thing. But while I was making fun of myself is, I don't know, you probably experienced was like this probably too is, it is preaching to like 500 missionaries or whatever it is. Like I try and step up and I had Pentecost. My first one was that Pentecost boy. and I had that like, boy. I had like a time limit. It's like, cause we, we, it was like beginning the retreat. So it's like, okay, I need Did you to you get all charismatic. Like your normal self. No, no, <laughs> shut up. Um, I had to do like, you know, a seven minute homily on Pentecost to all these missionaries who are excited about Pentecost. And it's like, okay, let's, and probably in an inappropriate way, I put in a lot of time to perform, you know, so I probably Atta made boy. it about me, but, um, <laughs> But I started it out with like, because what I like to do is start out with like a little, like, like a little bit of humor, not at the sake of just humor, but it's kind of the work for me at least of like, if you're going to like mold something with clay, like you kind of like work it first to get it malleable yeah. as a way to kind of get in like, you know, work it, bro. We're getting it. the audience. And and the first three jokes killed it, mm. <laughs> killed it. Everybody's laughing. Mm. They're crying. I got to like check myself. Don't go into a stand up routine. <laughs> Give the homily. It was good. <laughs> but what's funny if that was like, you know, at the end of like a free day, I, my second homily, my last one Trash. was at the end oh. of like a long work day. So that was like on a Sunday. It was like the lo- end of a long work day. And I kind of went for the same thing. Not flat. <laughs> <laughs> Got to read the room. Uh, oh man. I was like, I thought they were pretty good. There's maybe the execution was a bit off. <laughs> Anybody listen? Like this is good stuff. There were, like, there was three of them that were very, very good. I'm like laughing mm-hmm. to myself while I'm writing them. So that's what I was laughing. I was yeah. like, I went for these jokes. They didn't work. Um, but part of what I was like trying to speak into is just this like, kind of what we're talking about, like what it means to be a child, what it means to be a son or a daughter and not like, to approach the spiritual life as a simply as an athlete or as a performer or as we do with school or we do with work or Mm. like this kind of if you will like the the spirit of slavery um as opposed to the spirit of like adoption and um and i just feel somewhat like in it's just not necessarily where like a worldview or an approach that like a lot of like young faithful fired up catholics are about where you're saying like hey just like it's almost you're saying like, hey, like, like chill out a little bit, like rest a little bit. Like it's not um, because and it's just like you can't go faster than grace. Mm-hmm. Like you need the Lord. And so it's not about making making perfectionism or virtue or excellence or all this sort of stuff an idol. It's about like being with the Lord. And um, I had to like use a different version of it. But this is kind of what we're talking about, I think, is for me, it spoke so deeply. I had some friends who were there and they have a couple of kids and we're, we're before mass. We're talking and then all of a sudden they're like. Uh, a five or six year old girl is like, um, dad, I need to poop. <laughs> she like, screams it out. She just screams it out right before church in front of the priest all dressed up. And then the other, her, her like four year old sister, I have to poop too, dad. <laughs> but what I don't, there is something about this is like, here's her thing, but she, they're like surrendering control. Here yeah, I am, Lord. It could be embarrassed. Here I am, it could Lord. Be, you, know? <laughs> you know, and, and oh, it was like this excellence it. and this humility and this total sense that like, I here is where I am. I'm not ashamed of it. Lord, like father, like I need you. Mm, beautiful. Mm, I need you. I and I used it in the homily and I didn't, I didn't say poop because I didn't want to say that. I don't even like saying it even on this, but I'm like, I don't feel, I'm not going to say it into a microphone in a liturgy or something like that. But um, I thought it was like, this, this is, this is what we're going for. This just like mm. this. And I think this is kind of like this whole, okay, like you do a little examination. Here's your situation. Like, here's my situation, Lord. I need, mm. Or like a little kid, I need to be wiped or whatever it is. Like, mm-hmm. and then you go about your day, you know, <laughs> that's but awesome. that's, but I think that's the freedom of a son, of a daughter. I think there's something of this is the spirit. Like, Hey, we, we need the Lord. And when you really get rooted in what it means to be poor and to be in need and that the Lord's okay with that. And he knows that we need him. And that, um, I just think that this, like, there's a lot of peace and a lot of freedom that comes with being rooted in that truth. And we want to be like, we really want to be like excellent and perfected in, in dependence on him. Mm-hmm. And, um, and not just like, again, like, like you said, like your holiness or your sanctification or your virtue is a fruit of this dependence, not actually like, um, like your dependence on him is not an obstacle to your holiness kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah. Sorry. God's not your coach. Right. God's mm-hmm. not your, um, whatever your boss God's not even broken relationship with the father or mother. He's not that he's God mm. <laughs> and he's merciful and he, and he loves you a lot. And so just remember that always. You Beautiful. Know? And so, and so you guys remember that one, uh, 
meditation by Mary Caucus we've talked about before, the rich young man, you know, um, I've, I've done all this. What, can, what else must I do? And Mary Caucus has this beautiful, like, that this man's afraid to make his poverty uh, everything. You know, and Jesus says, go sell what you have and give it to the poor. Like, you lack one thing, you know, your poverty. Like, to, to make your poverty the most important thing, right? So this guy wants to say, hey, I've done all this. What else do I do? And Jesus is like, you need to be poor. And that needs to be everything, you know? So I, I think that's exactly where we need to be. We can't be afraid of our poverty. We can't graduate from our poverty. Um, I think when people really receive that and they're in a space to have an open heart there, especially when we're used to achieving and performing and doing all these things, I think when they allow themselves to kind of actually meditate below all those things that they put on themselves, they feel more themselves. Mm. When the burden's gone, when the when the the pressure is gone. Um, but the challenge is, yeah, the challenge is, is that that's uh, my own experience. That's just such a deep part of us sometimes, right? So, because then you can get up there and preach and not take it so seriously, and you can mm. you can talk about sin and make light of it, and, and even you, when you're not funny. <laughs> But I think you've had that conversion you, or you, you undergo that daily experience of mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm doing this dance between experiencing my limitations and my poverty and, and the goodness mm -hmm. of God, you know, and I'm, yeah. I'm being able to do that. But I think some people just need encouragement to, to put all that other stuff aside and, and to, just to calm down in a place of relationship and yeah. let God just kind of. Yeah. Some people just need to freaking relax <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me go ahead recently some of the postulants were just again intense and we're closing we're closing postulants to out and they're just worried and anxious and all these things and i'm like you need to go do something fun like we're done talking about this <laughs> yeah right like because there's a i mean and, and they they got it's my point that like sometimes it's like the, the gift of the invitation is to like of control and and have some seriously non-spiritual consolation, mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. go for a run, yeah. um, help cook dinner, sneak ice uh, cream or something. Right. I don't have a cookie, <laughs> right? Or just like, but to, but to, it's like people need to relax. But it's it's usually an invitation just to not be afraid to to let go and just enjoy enjoy yourself. Like it, this is supposed there's a, there's a sense of joy here, and when we lose that because we're so worried and anxious about holiness, perfection, sin, like all these different things, you're like huh, I don't know if it's supposed to be like this. Right. Like there's time to like go deep and to be intense, but there's also times like you just need to go do something fun. You need to get out of my office and go. Do something <laughs> fun. Like, right. you know. It doesn't have to be that complicated at the end of the day, <laughs> you know? And so, and it's not, yeah. we're not talking about indifference towards mm. sin. No, not no. at all. But just like, I, I think accepting the reality of our dependence on God and no, like, and, and surrendering control. And in some ways, like surrendering the timeline, not making things idols that are not to, like, you know, you're just not making things idols, right. which is a possibility in this space as well. And again, just this, like, we need, we need him. Right. Amen. We need him and you can't go faster than grace. It, yeah. When we pray, our prayer should be about Jesus. It shouldn't be about all our stuff. So if your prayer, if, if your sin is consuming your prayer or your desire for healing is consuming your prayer or your desire from virtue is consuming your prayer and not allowing your eyes to be to be fascinated with the person of Jesus, I think that's that's not what we're going for. I, I really don't. And now when you when you when you give your heart to Jesus and you turn your heart over to Jesus in prayer and there's something that the work that he does when he wants to, to bring up something or wants to bless you with the truth of something great. But if we go in with projects, then we're overwhelmed in prayer because yeah. we make it all about grasping at what we distracted. want. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I was kind of talking about this, I kind of got, it was like my last thing, like my going away thing. So I went, I was dramatic as I tend to do. Yeah. You, so I got, I got, I got a little emotional, broke down, broke, broke. What's that called? Broke, broke down. down. I didn't have a full breakdown. <laughs> like a mental breakdown? Or not did you cry? <laughs> <laughs> um, you had a good cry? I got a little emotional. Of course you did. Yeah, I went for it. Was and it? I felt, of course I felt... That's was so it, funny, was super insecure. Sloppy? But that's where you nah, needed. Okay. That's, that's where you, you need your us. brothers here. Yeah, we yeah, probably yeah. would just made fun yeah, of you. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, like, went back. To, in, we were like in the sacristy after, and it's just a different culture there, so like super quiet. I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Anybody? I just cried. Yeah. Anybody uh, want? Anybody? <laughs> that was weird, huh? Too much? Too much? Ah, uh, no, the missionary. <laughs> Again, like, I, why I, I move my sort of, if you will, like, spiritual fatherly heart for them so much? It's, it's like you're so focused on this stuff and perfection and achieving all this sort of stuff. Like, you just uh, it ends up being a block from you just being loved mm -hmm. and receiving that's it. love. That's and it's it. like, that's it. hey, just let let God love you. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just let God love you. And and if you are making an idol of this stuff and you're hyper-focused on it in an inappropriate way, you're not like creating this, you're so focused on your stuff, you're, you're not 
being receptive. You're not able to receive the Lord's love and his gaze upon you. And it's like, hey, okay, we're going we're gonna to figure this out. We're going to keep going, but let's just receive love at this point and be free to do so. Amen. And, and so, like, we just, and, and it's not just relax, not just chill out. It's not just whatever. Be indifferent. Or, yeah, yeah. It, it's like, hey, just, just let's take a second. To just Let's make sure we're receiving love at this point because like all this stuff isn't, you're loved where you're at and you just need to know that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Um, quick shout outs to anybody. I, I'll just do one. This is a, 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 we have a listener, a communal listener who sent us a thing. Kayla just graduated college. Congratulations. Had Poco Poco on her little cap. Mm -hmm. Sent us a awesome. very nice letter. Yeah, yeah. Congrats on the graduation. And again, if you want to support the podcast so we can stop asking for support and just because you want to support the podcast, you go to spiritjuice.org forward slash Poco a Poco. And if you have a college mug, city mug, whatever you Thanks, want to send Susan. it to us, we send love them. it. It's a great way because we don't we want to have contact with you and to rep you up here. And we're running low on salsa water. <laughs> <laughs> you want to close it out with a prayer, prayer man, <laughs> prayer man. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we love you and praise you and just thank you for the gift of being together today. Yeah, we thank you for the gift of simplicity. You invite us to um, to cease control. Right now, Jesus, we just give you control. Give you control of our hearts. Give you control of our lives. All of our desires, all of our hopes for holiness, for healing, for growth, maturity. We just send our, surrender that control to you, Lord, so we can just receive everything you desire to give us, uh, which is most importantly your love for us. Just remove any obstacles that, that keep us from experiencing your love this day. We pray all this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. 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 Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks, Amen. guys. Peace, Peace y'all. Peace. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well.